language over uh, the internet, trying to specialize, but trying to all actually let users communicate in order to create the Web3. So, let's hear the analysis. Hello. Kalispera, for the last three years of my life, I was giving birth to new ideas and babies. Today we will make a quick ride into the past, present and future of informatics world. In 1945, World War II was ended. In the same year, World Wide Web was founded. 67 years later, we are still thinking in terms of linked documents and data. We are storing documents into files and web pages. We are processing documents with myriads of formats. We're organizing them into hierarchies with folders and bookmarks. We use them to share and exchange information. So far, the digital document is the main vehicle for information exchange. In 1994, Tim Berners-Lee and others gave document an address for retrieving purposes. They named it Uniform Resource Locator. URL is still the core mechanism of web. It is a hyperlink between documents. The semantic web, though, overloaded URL with identity and naming of web resources, and that led to the identity crisis. In spite of the 10 years of evolution of the semantic web, the problem is still with us. Binary information resources are mixed with non-binary ones, and digital realizations are confused with the actual entities they represent. Tim O'Reilly cleverly looked at the evolution of internet from a different perspective. Web 2 includes social networking sites, blogs and media sharing. It offers rich user experience and participation, dynamic content and collaborative authoring. But Web 2 carries the same architectural problem as its predecessor. There is a gap between the presentation of information to the user and the representation of information for machines. Let me start with an easy problem. What is the difference between Web 2 and Web 3? The answer is 1. Because it unifies two different perspectives. The end user perspective and the technical user one, also known as GGG or Giant Global Graph. In the future, the end user will have his own decentralized, specialized, personalized, eponymous social networks and portals, as well as concept maps. Look at the board, they're drawing them right now. And that illustrate actually a complex problem and a new navigation and search method. On the other hand, the technical user will be involved with many interconnected services and each one will process data in a standard way with many different forms of input and output. For that reason, an upper-level ontology is required to provide 10 definitions and relations. Over the past decade, many foundation ontologies appeared on scene, but none as yet has been adapted by a wide user base. Your organ and upper-level ontology is different in many aspects. Based on the topic map standard, it is very easy to extend with definitions from other languages and ontologies, including a minimal set of elements categorized and abbreviated for memorizing. In neural topic represents an information resource, but there is an explicit distinction between a binary information resource and the notion of a term. In a direct analogy to URL, uniform symbol representation is the cornerstone of Web3. USR references everything, including files and web pages. Therefore, new vocabulary includes those terms and relations between them that are necessary for auditing and annotating purposes. Last but not least, new law intuitively suggests new ways for modeling NRE and directed relations. It introduces the variables, term, and the role of attributes as arguments in a relation. Okay, this is more than enough detail for the moment. Why I started all this? The first reason is my intention to organize and share my collection of bookmarks. Soon I realized that neither tagging nor hierarchical, <coughs> hierarchical classification was close to what I was aiming for. The second reason is related to the Medley open source project. 
I have studied thoroughly HL7 models, health standards, entity relational schemas, and it seems to me that the holy grail of health interoperability is interwoven with web evolution. Let's recapitulate. Our trip to the mysterious world of digital information has now ended. But I urge you to continue the exploration. We all need to find a map and a compass to carry on with our journey. With the public release of new law, let us proclaim the ignition of Web3 for a prosperous and effective communication. Thank you for your attention.